Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables where we talk about codes and standards as they relate to the solar and solar plus storage industries. Today I'm going to get into talking about string sizing calculations and even more specific, really the backstory or the information you need to know to set up your string sizing calculations. So it's really all about the temperatures and how we're going to apply those temperatures. String sizing calculations are important in really all of our PV systems. The reality is with the advent and the high use of module level power electronics, this is something that we've kind of gone away from as an industry because there's not a need to do a lot of the calculations when you're using those devices. But as we have with ground mount systems or we're doing with commercial systems where we're not utilizing MLPEs anymore, doing these calculations is calculations is important so that you make sure that you don't have too much voltage or too little voltage from the array to the inverter. So we'll talk about that, the kind of the temperatures aspect today. And then in a future video we have, we'll go through some of those calculations. And I should also note, we have a whole blog written on this. So if you visit our website, you can see all of this written out as well in order to you know, kind of help you move along in as you are doing these calculations. So let's first talk about that relationship of PV module voltage to temperature. So you see here on this graph, this is a IV curve. And what this IV curve is, well, there's four IV curves, and what they're representing is the same module or the same string. It kind of doesn't matter. There's, there's no units on the voltage and amperage, I realize. But all that we're changing is the temperature, the, the temperature that the cells are exposed to or that they're operating at. And so what you can see here, and I'll highlight this with my laser pointer here, but this is this red line. This point here is the 25 degree C line, which represents the standard test conditions. And so you can see here this IV curve as it goes up, you know, it crosses over. And really what we're focused in on is what does it do down here at the voltage? The PV modules have an inverse relationship with voltage, meaning that as they get colder, the temperature increases. As they get hotter, the temperature decreases. So you can see from this line, if we go over here to the left one from that red line, we have the 45 degrees C point. And so that PV module or this string is operating at 45 degrees C. You see that it's open circuit voltage and it's max power voltage, which is represented up here on the knee of the curve those both decrease relative to the 25 degrees C. If you get even hotter at 65 degrees C, you see you drop even more. On the flip side, as it gets colder, the module open circuit voltage increases. So these are important aspects to think about or to know about because as you are sizing your strings, you, gotta, you need to look at two different things. You need to look at the open circuit voltage when it's really cold, middle of the winter, sun pops up, array is cold that voltage is going to be put onto the terminals of the, of the inverter. We need to know what that is. We also need to know in middle of summer when the array is operating at an elevated temperature what that maximum power voltage is. So you're gonna look at both sides of it. Interestingly enough, the, when you relate this to code, because you know this is code corner and we're talking about codes and standards, when you relate this to code, all that code cares about is that open circuit voltage and that cold temperature. As designers, as engineers, we really are worried about both the open circuit, because that can actually damage the inverter, but we also care about where it's operating. So we will we'll talk about that as well. So one of the big questions that comes up all the time is, well, what temperatures do I use? So again, we need to find both the high and the low temperatures. And so you can see here, we're gonna talk about the high temperatures first. Next slide, I'll show you the lows. We have, this resource available to us as an industry. So this is a screenshot from the Solar Center in Florida. Uh, we'll have a link to this data, to this website in our show notes. So check that out if you don't already have access to this. But it's a really neat tool. You can actually type in a zip code. It'll take you to the closest stations. This is all based off of ASHRAE data that's been collected. So this is actual weather station data that's collected at different sites. And generally you can you know, type in a zip code or it'll show you a handful of sites around that zip code and you can choose whichever one is most appropriate for you. But 
there's really three ways you can, or three numbers, three temperatures when we're talking about the high temperature that you could use. The 2% ASHRAE is industry standard really. And so that's gonna tell us that for the way ASHRAE does it is that in the summertime months, they take an average of the temperatures of the hottest temperatures for the um, summertime months. And then it averages that, that out and it returns this 2% average, meaning that only 2% of the time does the temperature get greater than this. So it's a very small number of hours when you're considering you know, over three months, 2% of the time, it's you know, a very finite number of hours where the te temperature goes above that value. Conversely, you have the 0.4%, so it's same kind of thing. You will see that that value is greater than the 2% value because it's gonna say 99.6% of the time the temperature does not go above this. Either one are fine to use, quite honestly. The 2% data, the 2% value is what industry is standardized on and is, I would say, is a good number that you should use. If you don't have somebody telling you to use a different number, that's what, that's what we use when we're doing the calculations. And then finally, you could do the highest temperature ever recorded. Very uh, conservative, you can do it. Uh, you will just be more, much more restrictive on what your results are gonna be. Uh, but by all means, that's gonna be the most conservative and you can use that value if you really want. Now for the cold temperatures, the ASHRAE data does report that as well. So. Uh, on the previous, we had the 0.4 and the 2% value there that you can see um, on, the, on the data that's returned on the, on the slide there. And then on the low temperature, on the far right-hand side of that, all that data that is, you know, this one's specific to Florida, we have this minimum temperature. And so that's the minimum expected temperature for your site. And that is the value that I would suggest using for your locations as well. And you could use the lowest temperature ever recorded, completely fine and up to you if you want to. Again, it's gonna be much more conservative. And the thing about it is, if you think back at the IV curves I showed you, those were at a constant irradiance. So those had a thousand watts per square meter, a bright sunny day at those temperatures. As we know, when the sun comes up over the horizon, that's when the temperatures for per our PV modules, that's where when it's going to be coldest. That's when the sun comes up. That's when the module, the voltage is going to spike. The sun isn't bright enough typically to, you know, be at full having the Arabia at its, at its full potential. But we just estimated that it is. We're already being conservative, is what I'm trying to get at, with doing that calculation in the way that we're doing it, or that I'll show you how to do it. So using this extreme as they call it on the ASHRAE data or the lowest expected temperature it's perfectly good and I've yet to ever see that be uh, not good enough for doing these calculations so that's the one I would suggest you use all right couple things on reading the nameplate and then again in the next video we'll go through and show you the calculations themselves two voltages here that you need to look at for your inverters again we're looking at the changes for the high temperatures or the operating and then we're also looking at changes in the low temperatures or the open circuit conditions. So starting with open circuit, because that's where we could actually damage the inverter, we will see our inverters have a maximum input voltage. And you see there, it's gonna be 600 volts for residential, 1000 for commercial rooftop, 1500 volts for non, non um, utility scale or really anything that is not on a roof um, could be up to 1500 volts. Typically, it's going to be your larger installations. So in this case, we are showing a set of data from some uh, tri-power inverters, and you see their maximum system voltage we have highlighted there at the, in the second row of 1,000 volts, telling us that this inverter cannot have a voltage greater than 1,000 volts or else it will be damaged. So I'm going to do cold temperature calculations, apply it to the 1,000 volts, and that's how we're going to figure out what our maximum string size is. On the other side, we have minimum string size, and you're actually gonna see, we have one highlighted, so in this case, we have the 550 to 800 volts highlighted, and if you go across, you'll see that the rated maximum power voltage range, that is that value, 550 to 800. If you look one line down, it'll tell you about the operating voltage range, and it goes all the way down to 150. Really important thing to realize is the rated MPP voltage range 
is if you keep your voltage in that range, then the inverter will be able to produce the power, its rated amount of power. If you go below, in this case, 550 volts for this specific inverter, if you drop below that, you're gonna to start to lose power as well. Every inverter manufacturer has will have a power versus voltage um, graph or a curve that you can look at and you can see exactly how much power you lose as the voltage goes down. So that would be an important thing to do. So the advice is to design to that 550 volts. And if your array is always above 550 volts, then the inverter can produce its maximum amount of power at all times. So that's the one that I we suggest you look at and kind of run your calculations with. All right. So that was the again the backstory, if you will, or you know, kind of the fundamentals on doing the these calculations. In the next video, we will have we're going to actually show you doing the calculations. This is a, this information here is very similar to you know the information we present in our courses online that we have available on our website, and specifically as it relates to the 2023 NEC. So. You know, if you want to learn more about this kind of topic, others around the code, I uh, highly suggest taking a look at our website and seeing if some of those courses might fit for you. And then finally, if you have questions or comments, love to hear from people. If you want to get a little bit of clarification from something I said, or if you have ideas for other future Code Corners, we'd love to get those ideas from people. So feel free to reach out and um, hope to hear from you soon.